here to talk about standard deviation. And later in this video, we'll look at the formula and I'll show how to solve it by hand and then how to quickly solve it using Excel. But the first thing I want to do is to really help us wrap our head around what is standard deviation? What are we even trying to solve for? So to help us understand, let's look at the English definition of the word deviation. It's the action of departing from an established course or accepted standard. In statistics, the accepted standard for a data, a data set is typically the mean, the average. It gives us a standard for the middle of that data set. So when we talk about deviation, we're talking about how far does a measurement differ from the mean? How far away is it from the mean, either bigger or smaller? That's for a single data value and it's deviation. For standard deviation, we're talking about the whole entire set of data. But we're still kind of asking that same question. How spread out is the data from the mean? So standard deviation is helping us understand how spread out all the data is from the mean. And so for a very basic understanding, just know that if you get a small value back, it means the data is not very spread out. And the larger the value gets, the more the data is spread out from the mean. Let's look at an example here in Excel, and then I'll also show how to quickly use Excel to solve for standard deviation. And then after this, we'll look at the formula in the book and talk about how to work it out by hand. But first for this example, we have two neighborhoods, and here's the home prices for each neighborhood. And so we could find the mean, the average value for the home price in each neighborhood. And to do that in Excel, we type equals to start a formula, and we want the average. And then we just select all the numbers and close the parentheses. So here's the average home price for the first neighborhood. And for the second neighborhood, average, select them. It's the same exact average home price. So if we just looked at the mean, that accepted standard for the middle of the data, we would not know that there was any difference between neighborhood one and neighborhood two. They look exactly the same if we look at that mean. But the standard deviation will help us understand the neighborhoods better by letting us know how spread out is the data from that mean. So if you look at the first neighborhood, this data looks like it's all fairly close to the mean. While in the second neighborhood, sure, some data values are close to the mean, but there's some that are a lot bigger or a lot smaller, so it looks more spread out. So let's look at that. Quickly solve for standard deviation in Excel. You start a formula with equals, and then standard deviation, you type stdev. And then if you have a sample of the data, you use .s. If you had the whole entire population of data, which we typically don't in statistics, we usually just look at a sample. But if you have the whole population, you would do dot p. The formulas are slightly different. Excel will calculate them for you. But make sure you type either correctly dot s for a sample, dot p for the population. So I'll do the sample here. We have a sample of the homes from each neighborhood. So standard deviation dot s, then select the data, and we get a a standard deviation value that helps explain how spread out the data is. Now, this value should be bigger than 5.25 because this data is more spread out from the mean. And let's look at that. It's a lot bigger. So the more spread out the data is, the larger value you get back for standard deviation. Here's the formula for standard deviation. It's on page 145 of the textbook. And to work this out by hand, I'll walk you through the formula. You would take each data value, so start inside the parentheses, take each da data value and see how much it deviates from the mean. So the data value, subtract it from the mean, and you'll see how far away it is from the mean or how much it deviates from the mean. So I'll work out the standard deviation for neighborhood two here by hand. 
we want to see how far each of these data values deviates from the mean. So if we start with the first one, that first data value, let's see how far away it is from the mean of 120.3. So that's the deviation for the first data value. Let's copy that down through every cell. We'll get the de deviation for all the data. Now we can't just add these up right away. Watch what happens if we just sum these data values. Because some are negative and some are positive, they will always sum to zero. So what we do in the formula is first we're going to square them to make them all positive. And at the end we take the square root to cancel out that squaring and get us back to where we were. But we have to square them first so that the negatives and, pos and positives don't cancel out. So let's square all our data values. So each data value, we're going to square it here. So the formula says find the deviation of each data value and then square it. Now we add all those values together. So now we can sum that. Sum all of that. Next the formula says to divide by n minus 1. So after we, we've just reduced the whole top to a single number and we divide by n minus 1. n is the number of data values we have and there's 10 here. So we're going to take this value and divide by 9. So we're going to take g13 and we're going to divide by 9. So now we've divided. We've reduced that whole inside now. The only thing left to do is take the square root of our value. So we want the square root here of what we just calculated. And in Excel let's equals SQRT for square root. And we want the square root of that data value. And it'll give us the standard deviation. Looking back at the formula one more time, you, you see they reduce all this to a, a more compact way of writing it. This symbol just means add up all the terms. It's a Greek sigma and it means to sum all these terms. So you take each data value, subtract it from the mean and square it, and then this symbol means add up all those separate results. So here it is written out where they write each one separately with a plus sign in between. And here they condense it by just using this symbol that means add up all those results. Uh, but then the rest of the formula is the same. You, d you divide by n minus 1, so whatever the amount is in your sample, n is the number of data values in your sample, divide by 1 less than that, and then at the end take the square root. I, I switched back to page 143 in the text to show you the formula for the population standard deviation. It looks almost identical. The only difference is instead of dividing by n minus 1, so one less than our sample size. Here we have the entire population, so we divide by n, which is the n total number in the population. So if there were actually just 10 houses in the neighborhood, I would have used my population standard deviation equals standard deviation dot p. So if there's only 10 houses, that means I have the whole population. I use dot p and I get a slightly different value. It's still measuring how spread out the data is from the mean, but the value is different because I have the entire population. So likewise, you would solve it exactly out the same by hand, but at this step, instead of dividing by 9, I would, let me come do it right here, I would take G13 and I would divide by 10. And then I'll take the square root of that value to get the population standard deviation. One last thing to leave you with to help you understand standard deviation maybe a little bit better. Think about how you calculate an average or a mean. You would take all the data values, add them up, 
and divide by how many there are. That's how you calculate the average. And what did we just do when we calculated the population standard deviation? We took the difference between each data value in the mean, and then I had to square them to make them positive, but what I did was I added them all up, you add them all up, and I divided by how many there were. And then at the end, I took the square root to cancel out the step where I squared. But essentially, it's like calculating an average of how far each value is away from the mean. So that's a brief look at standard deviation. I hope you understand more about what it's measuring, how it's calculated. It's helping you understand how spread out the data is. When you use Excel to solve, which I recommend because it's so much faster to use the formula, let it do all the hard behind the scenes work. Make sure you're using .p if you have the whole population of data, and .s if you have just a sample of the data.